Bring the player, not the class. Blizzard's design philosophy for raiding in Wrath. Now this design philosophy led to changing how buffs and debuffs interacted on both a party and raid level. Many buffs and debuffs that were previously allowed to stack together no longer can in Wrath. And certain buffs and debuffs that only a single class would have brought in the past can now be brought by multiple classes and specializations in Wrath. This is arguably the biggest change to PvP in Wrath of the Lich King. In addition, Blizzard made almost all buffs raid wide. This now means players will now have more flexibility in which class they bring to parties and raids. There's no longer a need to organize your groups in a certain way. Uh, no more melee group, no more spell spellcaster group. It just doesn't matter anymore. So you might be wondering, will your class be in demand in Wrath based on all these changes? Well, the best way to figure that out is to review all of the buffs and debuffs that are provided by each class and specialization to see where the overlap is and which classes will bring things that are unique only to their class in order to see who will be the most valuable to a raid, bringing something that no other class can. So that by the end of the video, you'll know if your class class will be in demand in Wrath of the Lich King. Now as we go through this list, remember that each buff or debuff that we are going to talk about can only benefit a player once. The most powerful of, of the spell or ability will be the one that is overriding the other one. They don't stack, basically. So let's start with some buffs, all right? Horn of Winter from Death Knights and Strength of Earth Totem from Shaman both increase party and raid strength and agility by 155. So this is good to know. Uh, so your Shaman can use a different Earth Totem if, they, if a Death Knight is in the raid. So remember, all Death Knights get Horn of Winter. They're all gonna be using it, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, so Shaman probably use a different totem other than strength of earth there's probably going to be a dk in your raid let's be real inspiration from holy priests and ancestral healing from restoration shaman are both buffs which grants 10 percent reduced physical damage taken after receiving a critical heal note that neither holy paladins nor restoration druids can provide this buff so this is a reason to seek out either a holy priest or restoration shaman for your raid there you go they're going to be in demand. Both Blessing of Might and Battle Shout both grant the same exact amount of attack power and both have talents which improve that amount. The Retribution talent is called Improved Best Blessing of Might, increases effectiveness by 25% at max rank, and Commanding Presence for Fury Warriors increases the attack power bonus of Battle Shout by 25% at max rank. Now it's worth noting that the commanding presence talent requires five talent points to reach max, while blessing of might, improved blessing of might, only takes two talent points. So it might make sense for the retribution paladin to bring the attack power buff, the might buff to the raid. Now, a big call out uh, that I think is gonna make a lot of sense here is that mages don't get their mage lust or whatever you wanna call it, time warp, until cataclysm. So shaman are still very much in demand for their bloodlust if you're horde or heroism if you're alliance. Uh, but the sated debuff, okay, right? So when you get bloodlust, you get this sated debuff, making it so you can't benefit from bloodlust until the debuff fades. It's on a, lasts for about 10 minutes. Uh, so this means you can't stack shamans. You can't just lust after lust after lust, right? And the buff is raid wide again, like the, the rest of the buffs we're going through. Now, another one is Ferocious Inspiration from Beast Mastery Hunters, Sanctified Retribution from Retribution Paladins, and Arcane Empowerment from Arcane Mages. All three of these buffs are going to increase damage done by 3% for all party and raid members. Now, this is a scenario where the buff is exactly the same. So you're going to have some flexibility here in your choice on which class, Back you want to bring out of these three. I personally could see most min maxers bringing the arcane mage for this buff, at least until ICC, Ice Crown Citadel, when mages will transition over to fire. Retributions are going to get Shadow Mourn, so you're probably going to have that Retribution Paladin providing that buff. Depends on your raid composition, right? True Shot Aura from Marksman Hunters, Unleashed Rage from Enhanced Shaman, and Abominations Might from Blood Death Knights are ex the exact same buff, granting 10% increased attack power to party and raid members. Depending on if you have a Blood DK tank providing this buff, you might change your roster around. 
I don't know how in demand enhanced shaman are going to be, but marksmanship hunters are pretty middle of the road throughout the expansion, so True Shot Aura could be your go to if you don't have a blood DK tank. Now, there's another buff that's really important for your raid it's a 3% damage reduction raid wide. Blessing of Sanctuary from Paladins, Protection Paladins can provide this. Vigilance from Protection Warriors and Renewed Hope from Disciplined Priests all provide that same 3% damage reduction. Vigilance can only be on one target at a time, so it's not really that great of a buff for the whole raid. Renewed Hope, on the other hand, gives the entire raid 3% damage reduction when the Disciplined Priest casts Power Word Shield. So you can bet if you bring a priest, the whole raid will be covered. But if you have a pally tank and every other paladin buff is provided to the raid, you can have him throw up a sanctuary to the raid and that covers it as well. So I would say priest or protection paladin can provide that. Another buff, improved moon can form from balanced druids and swift retribution from retribution paladins. Both grant the exact same 3% haste. So you're going to want to bring one or the other or both. Doesn't really matter, but they don't stack again. Here's an interesting one. Tree of life from restoration druids and improved devotion aura from protection paladins. Both provide the exact same 6% healing received buff. Now, improved devotion aura, that could throw you off that's a paladin talent that applies to any aura you're using so it's not like the paladin has to use devotion aura to provide that increased healing buff it's it's any aura it's going to increase healing so that's pretty cool probably going to get that from protection paladin if you're min maxing but could also be provided by that resto druid if you don't have that talent improved imp from destruction warlocks you know for that blood pact and commanding shout from warriors of course they don't stack commanding shout i believe is more powerful so take that uh, as you will but both provide a health buff arcane intellect from mages and fell intelligence provide different levels of intellect you've got 48 from fell intelligence you've got 60 from arcane intellect if you have a mage in the group you don't need that affliction warlock providing that fell intelligence from their fell hound um, but if you don't have a mage get that fell hound out blessing of wisdom from paladins and mana spring totem from the shaman both provide exactly the same amount of mp5 believe it or not improved blessing of wisdom however increases that uh, mp5 that you get and restorative totems for shaman increases that mp5 both by 20 percent so they are exactly the same once again however the shaman talent requires three talent points to max out while the paladin talent requires two so if you're truly been maxing perhaps you're going to want the paladin to talent into that and then provide that improved blessing of wisdom to the raid and then the shaman doesn't have to use that mana spring totem they can use a different uh water totem another one is leader of the pack from feral druids and rampage from fury warriors these both grant the exact same five percent increased ranged and melee crit to the party and raid depending on what phase you're on you're probably going to be going with the feral druid for that five percent increased crit once you reach icc and you got fury warriors totally decked out maybe you're going to rely on the fury warrior maybe you're going to still have that feral druid i don't know but most likely early on feral druids are going to be providing that uh, another really important one is melee haste improved icy talons from frost death knights and improved wind fury totem from enhanced shaman both provide the same exact 20 percent increased melee haste now again i don't know how popular shaman enhanced shaman is going to be in pve i don't think they're going to be the most popular i think you're probably going to want to bring a frost death knight with improved icy talons for that 20 percent increased melee haste now a talent that is provided by many classes is next replenishment this will grant one percent mana back every five seconds and it is brought to the raid by five different classes each from differently named talents from different specializations we've got enduring winter from frost mages hunting party from survival hunters judgments of the wise from retribution paladins vampiric touch from shadow priests and improved soul leech from destruction warlocks now a lot of these specs i just listed out are actually more pvp focused like frost mage survival hunter and believe it or not destruction warlocks a little bit right so shadow priests and retribution paladins are most likely going to be providing this replenishment talent to your raid in pve situations depending on if you have a shadow priest or a retribution paladin available moving on to the next buff we have increased spell critical strike chance provided by either moonkin aura from balanced druids elemental oath from elemental shaman and those are the two they're exactly the same granting five percent increased spell critical strike chance probably going to come from the balanced druid i know elemental shaman is really more of a pvp spec in wrath uh, but again your roster it's up to you 
but probably going to bring a balanced druid for that. There's a 5% spell haste buff, which is only available from Shaman through the Wrath of Air totem. So you can see some indicators here that Shaman have uh, certain things that are going to be only for their class. So Shaman, I believe, are going to be in demand once again in Wrath for that, you know, 5% spell haste for the Bloodlust. Uh, and so on. So Wrath of Air Totem, probably going to be seeing that all the time. Spell power as a buff is gained from a number of different sources. There's Totem of Wrath from Elemental Shaman granting 280 spell power. Demonic Pact from Demonology Warlocks granting 10% of their spell power to the raid. Or even Flame Tongue Totem, believe it or not, from any Shaman for 144 spell power. Now these grant different amounts of spell power and the one granting the most would overwrite the weaker ones. So most likely it's going to be Demonic Pact from Demonology warlocks granting 10% of their spell power that's probably going to be like 200 plus maybe 300 I don't know it depends how much spell power your demonology warlock has but that's probably gonna overwrite the other ones making the demonology warlock in demand for your raid now there's also the spirit buff this is granted from divine spirit granting 80 spirit and also fell intelligence grants 64 if you got a priest in the raid Given that buff, you don't need that Fellhound. If you don't have a Priest, bring the Fellhound. Pretty straightforward. Stamina buff is provided by the one, the only, the Priest Power Word Fortitude. No other class has a direct stamina buff. If you're looking for stats, Mark of the Wild from any druid, as well as Drums of the Wild from Leatherworking actually provide the exact same amount of stats. So a Leatherworker with Drums of the Wild can actually replace your Mark of the Wild buff. I know it's crazy. There's also the 10% increased stats granted by Blessing of Kings, or 8% if you have Drums of Forgotten Kings, if you're a Leatherworker and you can't find a Paladin around, which, you know, I think in Wrath they're going to be running all over the place personally. But let's move on from buffs, and let's talk a little bit about debuffs because debuffs are just as important, right? Who, who's going to put the, the debuffs on the boss, right? Who's going to put those debuffs up? Well, we've got major armor reduction debuffs, right? From Acid Spit, from, D, uh, from Beast Mastery Hunter Pet. You've got Exposed Armor from Rogues and Sunder Armor from Warriors, all granting the same exact 20% armor reduction. However, in order for Sunder Armor to give 20% armor reduction, you need five stacks, right? Exposed Armor for Rogues, that just goes on for a certain amount of time. Acid Spit from Beast Mastery Hunter only needs two spit stacks in order to reach 20% armor reduction. So actually armor uh, reduction is put on most slowly by warriors. Sorry, warriors. <laughs> so you know, depending on what you bring, probably the rogue for that. Maybe the Beast Mastery Hunter, probably not. You might also have a warrior. I don't know. But depends on what you're looking for, probably best provided by the rogue. There's also minor armor reduction debuffs like Fairy Fire from Druids, Sting from the Hunter Wasp pet, and Curse of Weakness from any Warlock, which all provide the exact same 5% armor reduction debuff. And that is different from the major armor reduction debuff, so you can have both the major and minor ones. There's also attack power debuffs, Demoralizing Roar from Feral Druids, reducing it by 408, Curse of Weakness from Warlocks, reducing it by 478, and Demoralizing Shout from Warriors at 4 10. These are all about the same, but Curse of Weakness is the strongest there, so you could go with that. When it comes to increasing damage from bleeds, there are actually three sources. You've got Mangle from Feral Druids, you've got Stampede from Beast Mastery Hunter Pet, and Trauma from Arms Warriors. These are all 30% besides Stampede, which is a 25% increased damage from bleeding effect. So if you really can't find someone to bring increased bleeds, you could go with Beast Mastery Hunter, but most likely Mangle from the Feral Druid, I could see providing that to your raid. If not, you could also get Trauma from an Arms Warrior. Warrior. Now, decreasing casting speed can be done from a number of ways. You've got Lava Breath from the Beast Mastery Hunter pet. I believe it's the Core Hound. That one's super popular, granting a 25% decreased casting speed. There's also Slow from Arcane Mages, granting 30% reduced. Mind Numbing from Rogues and Curse of Tongues from Warlocks. All those do 30% reduced casting speed. And again, they do not stack. You can get this very easily from the Arcane Mage, the Rogue, or the Warlock. You probably don't need a BM Hunter to bring that to the raid. Increasing critical strike chance of all attacks made against the debuff target can come from Heart of the Crusader from a Retribution Paladin very easily, Master Poisoner from Assassination Rogue, and also Totem of Wrath from any Elemental Shaman, providing that same 3% increased critical strike chance, most likely coming from a Rogue or a Retribution Paladin, most likely for your raid. Reduced healing, you know, MS, the MS effect, right? 
provided by aim shot from hunters, wound poison from rogues, and mortal strike from arms warriors, but also furious attacks from fury warriors, granting 50% reduced healing. That's a new one. Health restore on hit. This is granted by judgment of light from paladins or on melee crit from improved leader of the pack. However, leader of the pack um, is going to give you 4% of your max health back, whereas judgment of light is going to give you 2% of your max health back. But of course, leader of the pack is going to proc way less because that's on crit, whereas judgment of light is on hit. So you're going to get way more probably from judgment of light. Mana restore on hit can only be brought by judgment of wisdom from paladins, which is really cool. Decreased melee attack speed. This is a fun one to talk about. This is granted from the four tanks in the same exact amount. Icy Touch from Death Knights is 14% reduced melee attack speed baseline. With improved Icy Touch, it goes up to 20. Infected Wounds from Druids, Feral Druids, is 20%, two talent points. Judgment of the Just from Protection Paladins is 20%, two talent points. And then also Thunderclap from Warriors is 10% baseline, up to 20% when you talent into Improved Thunderclap. So you can see that all the tanks um, are kind of properly equipped with this reduced melee and ranged attack speed debuff uh, in the same exact way as when you put those talent points in the right place. Um, this is the homogenation of tanks you're seeing, right? Bring the player, not the class. There's another one, melee and ranged hit chance reduction comes from either insect swarm from balanced druids or scorpid sting from hunter, both offering 3% reduced chance to hit. Most likely you're gonna have that from the balanced druid. Hunter would probably much rather bring be using a different sting than scorpid. Um, increased physical vulnerability. This is granted either by savage combat from combat rogues or blood frenzy from arms warriors this is going to increase all physical damage taken by the target by 4% at max rank. Probably, in my opinion, going to come from the combat rogue. But, you know, who knows? Maybe you're going to have an arms warrior bring it. You know, could come from either source. They don't stack, once again. And then finally, there's spell critical strike chance uh, from improved scorch from fire mages, winter's chill from frost mages, and improved shadow bolt from warlocks, all granting 5% increased critical strike chance. Now, the options here aren't super great. I'm imagining early on, you know, Nax Ramos. You're probably not going to have a fire mage. Probably not going to want to bring frost mage. You know, Destro Warlock can probably provide that 5% increased spell critical strike chance, even though Destro is like sort of not the best spec in Wrath, but you know, it can do stuff still. Increased spell damage can be brought by three different sources. You got the Ebon Plaguebringer from Unholy Death Knight, Earth and Moon from Balanced Druids, or Curse of Elements from a Warlock, all increasing magic damage taken by 13%. Curse of Elements also reduces resistances though, so in my opinion, it's slightly better than the others um, probably and the easiest to get right any warlock can do that so um, that's increased spell damage taken it's also increased spell hit chance from improved fairy fire fairy fire from balanced druids or misery from shadow priests both offering the exact same three percent increased chance for spells to hit the target and last we have stone skin totem and devotion aura offering the exact same amount of bonus armor so if you have um, you know, a shaman and a paladin in the raid, have them do one or the other. And that is all the overlap I could find. There's a ton. There was so much. That was so much information. Um, so if I was to summarize that for you, I would say overall it looks like paladins have a lot to offer a raid. They check a ton of boxes for both buffs and debuffs uh, with both their protection and retribution specializations. It seems to me if you just bring at least one Retribution Paladin and one Protection Paladin to the raid, you're actually covering the majority of raid buffs and debuffs. Now, Demonology Warlock is another uh, call out. They're probably going to bring that spell power buff that's going to be very nice. The same goes with Affliction Warlocks, bringing potentially some good buffs as well. Shaman is huge. Shaman is bringing buffs that no other class has. Of course, Bloodlust, Wrath of Air Totem. Priests are providing some exceptional buffs as well. Uh, also, I want to call out Druids. Both Feral Druid and Balanced Druid are bringing some very exceptional buffs to the raid. I could definitely see almost every raid wanting a Balanced Druid for the buffs that they bring against, you know, some of the other options, right? Elemental Shaman, you know, there's some other specs that probably you're, you're not going to want to bring. So bring that Balanced Druid. Now, another big class is Death Knight. You know, you're probably going to want to bring a Blood Death Knight over... 
enhanced shaman, right? Or if you don't have blood DK, maybe you're going to want to bring a marksman hunter as a you know different option. So I would I would probably say the only other overlap is probably a rogue over a warrior, perhaps early on. Later on, maybe you'll you know bring uh, the warrior, but I don't know for certain buffs. Uh, like Blizzard said, bring the player, not the class, right? Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.